Hello! My name is Fredjid, and this is the first in a series of tutorials on Alarum's Red Power mod for Minecraft. These tutorials are going to attempt to show the differences between vanilla Minecraft redstone circuits and contraptions, and the same circuits and contraptions using Red Power. In this first tutorial, we're just going to go over the basics about how Red Power wires behave in comparison to redstone. So first we're going to look at some of the vanilla blocks that redstone can't be placed on and see if there are any differences with red power wires. As you can see, neither redstone nor red power wire can be placed on cake, doors, or TNT. This is interesting though, redstone cannot be placed on pistons, but red power wires can. This will come in very handy in some situations as we'll see later. And the same goes for sticky pistons. Moving on, we can see that neither redstone nor red power wires can be placed on glowstone, glass, iron doors, or trapdoors. Then over here we have a couple of white lamps from red power. These will light up when powered by a redstone signal. You might think they would be like glowstone or glass, but you can see that you actually can place both redstone and red power wires on them. Next we're going to look at how redstone signals propagate through blocks. Here's some redstone with a vanilla redstone repeater, which as you know will push the signal into the block that it points at. Any redstone on any side of the block will be powered. If you put the repeater on the other side, it can pull power through the block and pass it on. But the block itself is not powered, so the redstone next to it will not be powered either. In contrast, red power wires do not automatically receive power from nearby blocks. The wire must be connected to the block by actually being placed on the block itself in order to receive power. Same thing when the repeater is pulling the signal through the block. The wire will not power the block by just being next to it, so the repeater isn't receiving any signal. Placing the wire on the block will complete the circuit, and again, contrary to the way redstone works, you can power the sides by placing wire on the powered block itself. Moving on, we'll look at the same four configurations again but this time using red power repeaters as opposed to vanilla repeaters. I'll show you more about these things in a bit, but for now we'll just look at how they propagate signals through blocks. You can see that they push and pull signal through blocks identically to the way that vanilla repeaters do. And so, red power wires behave the same way as they do with vanilla repeaters as well. Let's take a look at a few more examples of signal propagation through blocks. With vanilla redstone, a redstone torch powers the block above it. And so, redstone on top of the block will be powered. Also, if a block is powered by anything else, such as this lever, then redstone below it and above it will receive power. As well, redstone below the block that the lever occupies will receive the signal and of course, redstone behind or to the sides of the power block. With red power wire, of course, any wire that is physically touching a power block, as with this one powered by the torch below, will receive a signal. However, since the wire here is not physically touching the powered block, it will not be powered. This is just another example that illustrates the difference that redstone occupies an entire invisible block, but red power wire does not. And again, even though this lever is turned on and the block it's attached to is receiving power, neither of the wires here behind the block or below the lever are receiving power because they are not physically attached to the powered blocks, even though in this case, redstone would be powered. If we attach the wire here in the back, 
you can see it will then receive a signal. Likewise with the wire below, it is necessary to wrap it around until it touches the powered block. So you can see that in very simple designs, red power wiring is actually less efficient than plain redstone, since you'll need more of it to propagate the signal in most cases. Also, red power wire is a little bit more expensive to make. Each piece requires one redstone and one quarter of a bar of copper, and a fraction of a piece of coal, though copper is as easy to gather as coal if you have red power world installed. But the advantage of the wire is that it's easier to be precise in your placement of the signal, and of course it allows you to save space by attaching to walls and ceilings. Here are some more red power lamps to help illustrate how redstone power gets transmitted through blocks. Redstone will power the block below it, as well as the block it's pointing to, but not the block above it. But with red power wire, since it isn't touching the block in front of it, it is only powering the one below it. If we attach the wire to the block, it will get powered. Also, since the lamp above it is supposed to receive power, the wire will extend to it, unlike with redstone. Here we can see that a redstone current does not propagate through a piston. Likewise, the signal doesn't propagate through a piston when red power wires are attached. However, this is another case where wires are very useful, since they can be placed on the sides of the piston itself and can extend the signal in that way. Very cool. Similarly, with no space between the pistons, only the one in the middle receives a signal. This is true for both redstone and red power wires. But again, we can place the wires on all the pistons themselves to power them all around. Finally, let's see if the timing between vanilla redstone and red power wires is equivalent. Here we have 15 blocks of each, and when I flip the lever, both of the lights in the distance should turn on at the same time, and they do. Now we have a red power repeater on the left set to 1, and a vanilla repeater on the right also set to 1. The lights come on at the same time. Let's set them both to 4, and... Exactly the same. Now set to 8 on the left, and two vanilla repeaters set to 4 on the right. Now we set it to 16 on the left, so that's four vanilla repeaters set to four on the right. And jumping ahead, we'll set the red power repeater to its maximum of 128 on the left, and the equivalent amount of vanilla repeaters, that's 32 repeaters set to four on the right. Still identical timing. So the material breakdown for the two different repeaters is basically this. One red power repeater costs about 50% more coal and cobblestone, and a little over twice as much redstone than the cost of a vanilla repeater. So this basically means that if you only need one of four ticks, then vanilla repeaters are the way to go. If you need more than eight ticks, then you want red power repeaters for sure. If you need five to eight ticks, then it kind of depends on how much redstone you have, and whether you want the design to be flexible in the future or not. Finally, one more thing. As you know, redstone can only send a signal 15 blocks before it dies out, and you need a repeater to extend the signal. Red power wiring, on the other hand, can extend to 255 blocks without the need for repeaters. Here you can see the wire snaking up and around, and I didn't count the blocks, but it's way more than 15. We can flip on this lever, and the light turns on and off pretty much instantly. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to leave feedback either in the comments or via private message, and more tutorials are on the way.